Hey guys, I'm the 50s Kid. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to change your CCV system, which is the, uh, the PCV system on an E46 BMW. This also applies to the E39, the uh, E83, the E53, anything that has the M54 or M52 TU style engine. The CCV system, it wasn't very well engineered. It's located underneath the intake manifold. They don't last very long. The plastic becomes brittle. The lower hose that uh, leads from the oil separator down to the dipstick tube so that oil can return to the, to the oil pan, that hose will crack with age and that'll cause a massive vacuum leak. The system can also clog up with a yellow mayo type of substance. Depending on you know, how cold of a climate you're in, your CCV system won't last very long. So it's definitely recommended to change it. Uh, I have a previous video on how to change it by pulling out the intake manifold. I think it's kind of a better way, especially for, you know, if, if you haven't done it before, because you can sort of refresh all of your hoses. You can change all the vacuum hoses that are cracked and it kind of gives you the best access and it's the easiest way to go, I think. But then again, it also takes a lot longer. It is more complicated and there are more things to screw up, I guess, especially if you're a beginner. So. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it the easy way with the intake manifold still in, in there, or the quicker way, let's say. And uh, you know, a lot of other videos, there, there are a lot of other videos on this already, but all of them skip like the really hard parts when it actually comes down to hooking the hoses in when you, know, when they're un, when you have to fiddle with it underneath the intake manifold. None of them show it because it's very difficult to film, but I'm gonna film it. I'm gonna show you all the hard parts so that you can get the best picture in your mind's eye of how you do this. Anyway. Let's get started. There are several things you're gonna to need to remove from this engine before we even get started with this job. You're gonna to need to remove the air intake, the air filter box, uh, the upper and lower um, intake boots. You're gonna to need to remove the disa valve. You're gonna to need to remove the heat shield. You're gonna to need to remove the whole microfilter housing. I, and, and then you're also gonna to need to remove this, this cover right here. I typically don't refilm this. I've actually done a video in the past. It's called E46 Common Repair Steps. I'm gonna link it right up here at the top of the screen. Go ahead, watch that video first so that you can understand how to remove all of these really common parts and then come back to this video and then we'll get started. So where we need to go from here is we need to remove the dipstick tube. We need to remove this, this electronics box. We're gonna unbolt it and sort of move it across to over here. Then we need to remove the idle air control valve and the throttle body. And then we'll finally have access to everything that we need. Let's start off with the oil dipstick tube. There's a 13 millimeter bolt right here that we just need to remove. So I'm gonna pull the dipstick tube out of its holder. I want you to be aware that Back in here, you can see this tube right here. This is the fuel hose. This is normally gonna be sort of clipped into a plastic clip, so you're gonna have to reach down and sort of undo the little plastic clip to get that out of there. There's also another little hard plastic line and a clip behind that. You'll have to get that out. And then you'll wanna fish your oil dipstick tube out, sort of out from around the fuel hose. Now you'll notice there's another little hose still attached to the oil dipstick tube. That's the return line from the, uh, the CCV system. And we're gonna need to get that line off. Now for you, the easiest way is gonna be to cut it off. So you wanna take a little utility blade like this and just make a slit right down here, okay? And that's the easiest way to get that line right off. Me, I'm gonna be able to get that line off just normally. So I'm gonna do that. I should be able to use this tool to sort of get in there and spread it off. Just like that. I'm not gonna be destructive if I don't have to be, but I definitely recommend that you be destructive because it's just quicker and easier. You'll notice on the end of this dipstick too, my O-ring came off. My O-ring definitely needs to be replaced. Typically, these aren't gonna come off on the dipstick tube. They're gonna stay down there in that little hole right there. So just reach down, grab your O-ring, and pop it back on the, the, the dipstick. And uh, you might wanna replace this. So I'll put the part number in the description. 
you want to make sure that this is not clogged up. If it is, you're going to want to clean it out. This port, this passage, leads to the outside of the tube. The inside of the tube is where the oil dipstick goes, but the outside is where that oil drains back from this tube. So you're going to want to clean it out. Use some carburetor cleaner, whatever you got, any kind of solvent, and just clean that sucker out. Our next step is to remove this electronics box. There are three bolts. They're all tens. There's one here, there's one here, and then there's one up here. It's gonna be right on the far lower side of the, uh, the throttle body here. Now there are gonna be two bolts down here. There's gonna be one which is just a normal bolt like this, okay? It's a bolt. What we're looking for is, a, is a, a nut. So if you feel down there, if you feel the difference between this, this one's not going to have a little stud protruding from it, but this one is. This is what it looks like down there. So if you just feel around down there, you'll feel where the stud is, and then a little bit above it, you'll feel where the bolt is. The bolt is for the intake or the, the throttle body. The stud with the nut is for this electronics box. So all you got to do is sort of feel down there for it. Now this electronics box will come away, but we're going to need to disconnect a few things from it in order to get it to pull back all the way. So we'll need to disconnect the idle air control valve. So that is just, you push this little metal tab and that pulls out. So that gets us definitely a little bit farther back. Back to about here. Now you'll notice this, this one right here, this is the EVAP tube. Let's see, can we see that? Yeah, this is the, the EVAP purge solenoid. So we're going to disconnect this. Now this one is a very distinctive connector because it, it's reversed. There's only one other reverse connector, and it's right here, and that is for the DISA valve. You'll notice this one is not long enough to, to reach over here. Okay, so that's how you know that this is not the one for the EVAP valve. Let's see, it probably, probably wouldn't really connect on. It would connect on, but it's a little awkward to reach over there. This one obviously is a lot closer, so that's how you tell those two things apart. Let's try to pull this back, see if we've got the room. You'll notice that this cable down here, this one's a little bit, it's, it's a little bit difficult for us. So let's pull this out. This one is a two-pronged connector, okay? People always get this confused. If you go ahead and you disconnect, there's another one down here. It's going to be underneath here. I'm going to unplug it for you. So this one right here, they look the same. Both these connectors look the same, very similar. One of them has only one prong inside of it, whereas this one has two. The one with the one prong, the connector is facing this way. It's lower, it's down in the bottom, and it's facing this way. The, this one is a little bit higher, more towards the front of the engine, and it connects in this way. So that's how you tell those two things apart. We'll go ahead and just disconnect that one as well, that lower one, just to kind of get it out of our way. Let's see, we're doing pretty good here. You'll notice that this is kind of getting in our way, right? So this is the EVAP purge solenoid. It's actually mounted in a rubber bushing right here, and it's connected to a little metal tab that's, just, that's part of a bracket that's uh, bolted to the intake manifold. And the line, actually is connected down below it. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna disconnect the line. You can see on this side, there's a little tab right here. If you push the tab in, you'll be able to disconnect the line. So that's all that was. All I did was I pushed the tab in and I pulled it down. Now I can sort of just get this tube out of the way. Now it's not bothering our electronics box as much. We got a lot more room to push that electronics box down. Now we're getting a lot of room here. Now, this is not all you want to do with the purge solenoid. 
it's going to be helpful if we pull it forward and just pull it off of that little mounting tab. That way we're going to get access. You see this tube right here? That this little curved tube, that's one of the CCV tubes. And then you see that one that's going at a diagonal like that right here. That is also one of the CCV tubes. That is the, you know, we needed that access. We need to be able to get our hand underneath here to fiddle with this. This is one of the big secrets of doing this job. You need to pull that EVAP purge solenoid off so that you got access. So next thing we're going to pull off the idle air control valve, which is going to be two T40s right here and right here. And then we're going to pull off the throttle body, which is going to have four tens up on each corner. Now, if you have an M52 TU engine, you're going to have an old style throttle cable that is coming through a bracket right here that's going to be connected to the throttle body. And you'll just need to take off the, the idle air control valve um, and that bracket at the same time and you'll be able to sort of get that off of the uh, throttle body. I wish I had one here to show you, but uh, it's pretty simple. They, you know, it's just like a little bicycle cable. If you've ever seen like a brake cable on a bicycle, how that connects in, it just slips into a little, little hole in the bracket. There should be a little cutout where you can, you know, just turn the cable and just pop it out. So that's all you got to do. So our idle air control valve. you got to do is wiggle it out. So there you go. Now you should be able to do this. You should hear this little, this little noise. You should be able to, when you're doing this, if you can sort of look in there, you should see that little flap inside flapping up and down. If it's not flapping up and down, or if you've never pulled this thing out, depending on the age of your car, this thing's going to be gunked up. And what you want to do is spray it with WD-40 because that'll both clean it and lubricate it. You want to make sure that it's nice and clean and clear like this, flap and free. Next, we're going to get out the throttle body. You can see two of the bolts right here. The other two are below it. So we're going to unplug the connector. There should just be this one thing on the side. Push that and it'll pop off. Hey, I got mine off one-handed. Pull this out before it drops. And I'm going to pull these two out as well because the whole thing's going to fall free once I get this bottom one off. And there you go. So I'm going to pull this out together. Now, you are going to be tempted to clean this thing out. And you can go ahead and use some throttle body cleaner to do that or some carb cleaner. But I caution you, do not move this butterfly when you're cleaning it. A lot of people are tempted to do that and they're a little too rough with it. There, is a, there are little plastic gears inside here and they tend to be, get brittle with age. They could crack if you're a little too rough with it, if you try to move it a little too quickly. If you do it very slowly, very deliberately, you might get away with it. But this is a completely sealed unit. You cannot take it apart if you skip a couple of the gears or if you break the gear off, you're screwed. You gotta buy a new one of these. So there's really no need to move the flap when you clean it, just spray it out, wipe it out with you know blue paper towel, and then that's it. So the oil separator is held in with two T25 bolts. You can see one at the top there, right there, one at the bottom right there. We'll get those off last. What we want to do is we want to start getting off the hoses and stuff. So you can see there's this one hose coming from the bottom of it. We've already, already disconnected it from the oil dipstick tube, so we technically don't have to actually get that off of there. But there are going to be other hoses connected to this oil separator that we do want to get off. You can see there's one coming out of the side right there at the top. And you can also see that there's one connected to the bottom right there. So we're definitely going to want to get that bottom one out. So I'm going to show you how to sort of break these out of here and get them out. You want to just sort of reach down with a screwdriver and 
get in this little tube and just sort of break it. See how it's brittle with age? Just break it off. That way you can just pop the tube out with your hand, pull it out and you're done there. So that tube that I just broke off is right here. Let's get that EVAP valve out of the way. That goes horizontally up through here and it connects to the valve cover. Now you can see mine's sort of already broken off here. So I can just pull this out, but you should just break off the little outside tab and I'll show you what a new one looks like in just a second. So this is your oil separator. This is how it sits in the car. This is the tube that we just broke off, the lower one. So that's what it looks like. You can see that it's got these little squeeze tabs on the side. It's supposed to spread these little arms out here. This is what actually locks it onto the separator. So not only do you want to break these little tabs off, you definitely, if, you, if you're still having trouble, you want to get your screwdriver under there. This is the tab that you want to break off on both ends. So break that off and break that off. It's just easier that way. You can just pull it out. Same thing goes for up here, same thing. Break it off, stick your screwdriver in there, break it off, but get these tabs off too. You can just pull it out. So the next troublesome hose that we have to deal with is gonna be this upper one. The way this one actually attaches is it doesn't actually snap on, whereas all these other ones are just direct snap-ons. It doesn't matter, you know, we're just gonna straight push it on and it's gonna snap into place. They're always pretty difficult, but you heard that snap into place. So, whereas that one is a snap-on, this one doesn't snap on. Instead, what you're supposed to do is these two little ears right here, you can see how there's a little cutout right here, and there's a cutout right there on the side. We're going to align the little ears. We're gonna do it in the down position like this and then you twist it up into place. And we got to do that while it's up underneath the intake manifold, which is kind of difficult. Now to get it out, it's going to be even more difficult. You have to detach it from the top first and then swing it down in order to pull it off like that. I recommend not even trying to do that. Just we're going to reach down and cut it right here. That way it's just super easy. We can just get it out. It's so easy that way. But this tube on this new aftermarket set that I bought, doesn't really look right to me. In fact, it's, it looks a little bit too long over here. And it's kind of going at an odd angle right here. So I don't know if I'm gonna be able to use this new one. I might need to reuse my old one. So I'm gonna get it out very carefully. But what I recommend you do is cut it here, break off the two top tabs right here, and it's gonna be easiest to pull off that way. So here, is that tube guys and all i'm talking about is cutting it right there like that like i said i'm not going to do it but you can just cut that tube it'll make it easier to come out make sure you don't cut this tube this is an oil line absolutely do not do that do not cut the rubber one cut the little plastic corrugated one okay make sure that you get that right if you come up here this is where that tube connects to so you can see it snakes down from above, from below, connects in above. You can see that little connector right there. So you can reach in from this angle and break it off, break off the little, the little ring right there. And this is what it looks like from this angle. Normally you're supposed to be able to pinch those to get them off, but you're never going to be able to fit your fingers in there. It's going to be really difficult. It's going to be difficult enough for me to actually get that off of there. There is one more tube that connects from that tube and it runs back and it connects to the back of the intake manifold right here. This is, I believe they call this the collector. And again, it's got a similar sort of thing. So you can sort of see it from here. It's right under there. It looks exactly the same. It's got a little, a little ring that you just reach in with a screwdriver and break it off. So I'm definitely going to break this one off, sort of reach in there. The screwdriver might be a little too big. No, I don't think so. There. Break it off and just push it back. So this one tends to be a little tricky to get off. And the way you actually do it 
is you can see how this inner part with the little ridges, it moves independent of the outside part. Pull it back and you want to hold it so that it that the little ridges stay forward. We're going to need to push it in while we're holding those ridges. Push it in and pull it out. That's the secret. So these little ridges, they have to be moved forward towards the end of the thing and held there and then pulled back. So once again, hook it on, impossible to get off. Pull it back, hold the little ridges forward, push it forward and pull it off. Easy, right? It's one of those impossible things. What we're gonna do, what I recommend you do, is just cut it. Easier said than done. There. Cut it out. Don't need the old one. Now, you'll notice there's a little wire looped around. We can actually disconnect that wire. It's another little push thing. And that way we can get this out of here. Now, if you've never had this out, if yours is really old, this foam is gonna crumble away and you're gonna to need to clean it out from right here. So make sure you have a shop vac or a vacuum cleaner or something. So I am gonna to attempt to get this tube, this old tube out of there without breaking it. So I'm gonna reach through from here, right here, and I'm gonna to try to press on these tabs and see if I could get this off in a civilized manner because I might need to reuse this old one. Just depends on how much this one can be sort of bent because it's, a, it's at a little bit too much of an angle here. It should be sort of at a right angle. Hey, I did it. There we go. So now we're just gonna sort of push it back, bend it down. Remember that lower tube, guys, the one that was connected to the dipstick? Let's make our life easier. Let's break that one off. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, I did get it. So I'm just gonna pull it out of there. Now be aware of the routing of this tube. It goes under, underneath this hard plastic line right there. So we're gonna pull it out of there. You notice this little metal thing in the middle of my tube? More on that later. Okay, now let's unbolt our oil separator. These are special bolts. They are plastic bolts. They have a very coarse thread. You don't want to drop them or lose them. So hopefully you're understanding how it would be so much easier if you had gone ahead and cut this ribbed tube and such. But since I didn't cut mine, I'm just gonna sort of fiddle with both of them, twist them to the down position. This is why nobody films this, because you need, <laughs> you need four hands. What I just did was I, I twisted the tube down a little more and the oil separator out. Now I should be able to pull this off, see? So that came right out. So there's our oil separator. And I was able to pull this tube out so I can possibly reuse it.